Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating patterns in Photoshop CC 2021 and later using the new tool that we have for creating regular patterns. I'm going to choose File and New. I'm just going to start with a document 1000 by 1000 pixels in size for this particular pattern. I'm going to display my layers palette. Of course, you can get to that by choosing Window and then Layers. I'm going to add a new layer to the document. Now I'm going to create a pattern of dots. So I'm going to start with a pink dot. Let's just go and get the ellipse tool. I've got it set to pixels because I want to show you what's about to happen. So let's just make it a nice big circle and I'm just going to center it in the document. I'm going to add another layer to this document and I'm going to make a circle this time. It's going to be black. So we've got alternating circles. It's going to be a little bit easier for us to see what's going on here. So the second circle is pretty much the same size as the first one. Now I want to place it up here in the top corner of the document. And what we're going to do is rely on the new pattern tool to duplicate it around the edges of the pattern because that's what it's designed to do. So let's go and get the new pattern tool, which is view and then pattern preview. You're warned that Pattern Preview works best with smart objects and in actual fact that's exactly a good warning because this is what happens. If you don't pre-prepare your objects that are going over the edges of your design as smart objects, they're going to be cut off like this. So let's just exit this because not everything is lost at this stage. I'm going to the selection tool here. I've got show transform control set on and I've also got auto select set to layer. That means I can just click and drag on anything on any of these layers and I'll immediately select it. Just makes life a little bit easier. So let's take this circle here and let's make it a smart object. Right click and choose convert to smart object. Now let's go and do the same thing again. View, pattern preview. This time things are really different because this object, which was a set of filled pixels, was over the edge of the sort of work area, the artboard. Then it was being cut off while it was just pixels, but it's being saved as a full object if it's set as a smart object. And so now look what happens. I can move it around. I can pull it into position. I've got this circle and I can put it anywhere I like. I can also go and grab this one as well and I can place it where I like to. Because it was in the middle of the document before I actually went into this pattern preview mode, it's actually retaining its wholeness, if you like. It's not being cut off when we take it over the edges. So just be aware of that. If you design things inside pattern preview mode, then they're going to be more resilient than if you put them there to begin with and they're just pixels. They're going to be cut off when you actually go into pattern preview mode. Now in this pattern preview mode, we can add other things. So let's go and add a couple of smaller circles. Let's change the color of this. Let's go for a sort of turquoise color. I'm going to draw out a circle. You can see from the control bar up the top here that's set to pixels. So these are just pixels. But look how this is behaving because it was created when the pattern preview mode was already enabled. It's actually being reflected over the edge of the design. Let's go and put another set of dots up here. So let's again go to the circle, holding the shift key as I draw this out so it's in perfect proportions. Let's go and place it where I want it to be. And let's zoom out so we can see what we've got. So this is what our pattern is going to look like. This is the actual tile edge, if you like, this sort of blue marker here. But you're getting a good idea as to what your pattern looks like. Now to create this as a pattern, what you'll do is open the new patterns panel. If you're looking for that in the new Photoshop, it's in window and then pattern. So you want to click to open that. Because we're in pattern preview mode, we can just click here 
and say this is the pattern we want and so here it is as pattern 7 I'll just click OK. You can come out of pattern preview mode by choosing view and then pattern preview and it just goes back to what it looked like here. You'll see that it's a little bit different it doesn't have that full reflection simply because this object is a smart object and these are actually half shapes that are over the edge of the document. A little bit weird that but that's the way it's working. Let's create a new document that is much, much larger and let's go and fill it with our new pattern. Well, the way that you can fill documents with patterns in Photoshop now is to just drag that pattern out of the pattern swatch and into the document. Of course, you can still do it in all the other ways that you're used to adding patterns to a document, such as edit and then fill. And you can do it using layer, new fill layer, and then choose pattern. In actual fact, this method here is pretty much the same as using layer, new fill layer, pattern, because when we go to the layers palette, you'll see here that we have a pattern fill layer and if you're used to using that pattern fill option you can double click on this here and you can see that you can change the angle of it and also the scale so you can make it bigger or smaller by just adjusting this setting here and that's consistent with how it's been in previous versions of Photoshop. So some things to consider when you're using the pattern tool in future. Firstly, it's only going to make these simple repeating patterns. It's not going to allow you to make more complex half drop repeats, but when you're creating simple patterns, this is a really good tool to use and it's certainly super helpful. You may want to just work in pattern mode. So go to view and then pattern preview and click OK. And you can work within this mode without actually creating objects to begin with because you've got access to your layers palette here. There are a couple of things that you can't do. I'm actually going to fill this layer with a color. So let me just go and get the paint bucket tool. Let's fill it with this sort of blue color. We're seeing it all over the place because it's actually being repeated. So it's our pattern if you like. But if I go and try and, for example, use difference clouds on this with filter reference and then difference clouds, I'm getting a warning that the filter doesn't support pattern preview mode. You can still use it, but the filtered pixels are going to cross document boundaries. So let's have a look at that. And what we've got here is the difference clouds have been rendered on this document, but you can see that it's not creating a seamless pattern. Now, if you wanted it to be a seamless pattern, you could just drag this over here so you can see where the seams are pretty clearly and you could then use a tool such as the patch tool or even the clone stamp tool to try and get rid of these lines. I've got the patch tool here set to content aware sample all layers and so what I would do is to just go and grab some of these pixels here and try and replace them and in doing so I should even out this design so that the lines are being removed and so it will create some sort of a repeating pattern but just be aware that not all the filters are going to immediately create seamless repeating patterns as you might expect them to do so I'm just going to drag this one in and we have a relatively seamless pattern you probably want to have a look at the lines through here and just make sure that it was seamless before you progressed if you want to hide this blue marker so that you can see things more clearly, go to view and turn off extras and it's an extra. So that lets you see perhaps a little bit more clearly what your pattern's going to look like. Let's go to view and turn extras back on. Another thing to be aware of in this pattern preview mode is that you can of course create shapes in it. So you can use the tools that you're used to using. I'm going here to the custom shape tool because I have a flower here from the legacy shapes selected. If you want to see how to get to those, go to window and then shapes because there's a new shapes panel. Go to the fly out menu and here you can click to select legacy shapes and more and then the legacy shapes will be added to your shapes collection. They're all bundled up inside groups. It's really inconvenient. It's really a bit of a mess, but they're there. So I'm going to use this flower shape. I'm going to hold the shift key down as I bring in the first of my flowers. So I'm working here with, uh, let me just select this. 
I'm working here with pixels, but I can also use shapes. So let me just go to shape and let's draw another flower, this time as a shape. Now I'm going to need to select the colors here. So I'm going to choose a sort of pink for my shape and no stroke. Obviously selecting colors for your shape is different to selecting it for pixel based objects. Just be aware of that. So let's go and draw in this flower. As a shape, I can also rotate it. So let's just go and rotate it. Now I bought this flower in as a shape for a really good reason. Let me show you why I did that. I'm just going to turn it off for now and let's go and add a new layer and let's bring in the same flower, but this time as pixels. So I'm setting it to pixels. We've got a pink color. It's all going to look initially exactly the same. I'm going to the move tool and I'm going to move this into position. But this time you can see that all four are moving, not just that one. And look what happens if I try to rotate it. It's fracturing. So you don't get the same rotation options available if you bring objects in as pixels that you have if you bring them in as shapes. So let me just accept that, hide that. Let's go back to the one where the flower is a shape. This flower is selectable and it's only one flower that's controlling all these other four. So as I move this one flower, these others move with it. But this one can also be rotated and it rotates in place. And so all the other flowers rotate accordingly. So just be aware of that. And I guess really if you have a choice, Creating things as shapes here is the better way of doing it. They're going to be rasterized when you create the actual pattern, so you don't have to do anything different with them. But you will find that it's a little bit more forgiving if your objects are shapes and not pixels. And of course, if you're using the shape tools, it's a matter of choosing here to choose shapes rather than pixels. I've finished this pattern, so let's go and open the patterns dialog here and click the little plus sign to add my new pattern. Let's go back to the document we were working in previously that has patterns in place. You can see here that's the one that we just created by dragging the pattern into the document. Well, we could also just change this pattern layer by double clicking on it, opening up the flyout menu and at the very bottom, the very last pattern is going to be the pattern that we just created. And again, we can size it. So at the moment it's at 56% of its scale. We can make it bigger or smaller as desired. Now this pattern has a white background embedded inside it. So the background to this document is actually not doing anything. And if we were to add a new layer and fill it with a different color, I'm just going to fill it using layer, new fill layer and then solid color because this is a really good way of filling documents. So let's just go and get a sort of dark purple to use. I'm going to place it underneath the pattern and you can see that we can't see through the white in this pattern to the color below. If you want your pattern in Photoshop to be transparent, you'll want to make sure that you turn off your background layer so that you see the transparency on the screen. Let's create this as a transparent pattern. So I'll just click the plus sign here, click OK. Let's go back to the document we're using as our working document. I'll double click on the layer here that contains the pattern. Click the down pointing arrow here, pick up the last pattern that we made. And this time you can see that this pattern is transparent. So it's got transparency in it, which means that whatever we put on the layer below is going to be able to be seen through the pattern. The reason why I like this solid color fill layer is that you can double click on it and you can just play around with different colors so you can sort of sample them as you're looking at the document and decide what it is that you want. You don't have to sort of try a color, don't like that, go and find something else to use. There's a lot more flexibility with using this particular tool and the way I got to that was choose layer, new fill layer and then solid color. Just think it's a really good way of filling a layer if you're not 100% sure what color you ultimately want to use. 
So that's how the new pattern preview tool can be used in Photoshop. I think it would be probably better if they didn't call it pattern preview, but they called it pattern make because that's really what it's all about. It's not just previewing a pattern, it's actually making a repeating pattern here in Photoshop. Now before we finish up, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends and co-workers. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.